Um, I almost stuck a light in, but I was I agonized around on deck for half an hour with it today, and to put the light where it would not have that shadow would have occluded the uh, Norbit multi-beam, and I don't think Chris would be too happy with that. So. No, we don't want to move it. <laughs> if we can avoid moving it, it's helpful. Cause no, if no, I do the, I, the light, I was going to... Oh, put it in front of the Norbit. Well, I was kind of beside it, and I, wasn't, I uh, wasn't sure it would... I don't know. It depends on where beside, but yeah. What, what At the, really the close long. range, it tends to kind of see through things, yeah. or around, but... What part is the receiver again? Is the the receiver is the pie shaped one. Yeah. So it would have been in front of it would have been right next to the transmitter, which would have been. Yeah, the hot dog shaped one. Yeah. Yeah. And that would have affected the beam on the starboard side. Yeah. The starboard side is kind of our worst side anyway, but Yeah. I, I didn't think it was worth going there. No. Just deal with the shadow. All right, how's uh, everybody like this new, improved, slightly cropped display? I like it. Looks good. All right. I can pretend I nailed the lights. Oh. He's getting settled. Uh, Manal, when you're ready, I think we're ready to put the triclops back she on. She stepped out for a second. Okay. All right. I should have listened to you, Jonathan. If you're listening, I should have tilted the uh, tray crops up, or the cinema cam up just a little bit to get rid of them. I thought we could do it with the lights, but. Is that a uh, whale scour? Yeah, it looks like it could be, yeah, a big twail cool. marking. Yeah. Cool. Oh, look at that. That is cool. Yeah. Somebody interacting with the bottom one. Huh? Where at? Do you think that's a, if Can you uh, iris down just right. a little bit yeah. for me? But is it only whales that do that, or uh, are there other? Pete, are you on? Yes, I'm on, Dan. Can you uh, iris down just a bit? I'm going to. Uh, yes, sir. See if I can pivot around the whale scale. Maybe I'll just follow it because I'm going to have a dust cloud behind me. So, what we're seeing there, we think, is uh, the interaction of some, some animal with the seafloor. Whales certainly do that as they come through. And Maybe yeah, so that. yeah, this looks like it could be uh, a contact point from a beaked whale diving down and kind of sticking its nose or its beak into the, the sediment. It's crazy um, they get this deep. Yeah, uh, it's a little too large to be a sea cucumber path uh, pathway, but sometimes you can see markings from sea cucumbers when they are feeding in the sediment. And they'll leave a little trail behind, but those are usually much smaller. So we're going through, right now we're going through what's going to be the probably the flattest patch um, on this plateau. We, we had one very flat patch when we uh, started. Um, came up over a, a high with a bunch of the basalt outcropping. And, uh, and some, some beautiful little spots with, with corals and crinoids on it. Um, we're going through this flat, sandy, hey, ripple, Chris, you're ripple ready area to now. Go again? And then in yeah, a while we'll start moving. climbing and eventually yeah. come to the base of a, a steep cliff. Do you want to uh, likely... Oh, uh, with the stick, yeah. Drive this thing Yeah, hour, sure. Within an hour or so. And then start climbing very up a, very, very up a very steep cliff.
So what's that little thing there sitting in the sand? Not many things usually sit in the sand like that. Can we get a zoom in on whatever that is? Oh, we're having a pilot, a pilot swap again. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. On the, uh, on which? There's a, this little thing sticking up in the sand. The blackish thing? Yep, yep. Okay. Oh, it's so unusual to see something sticking up out of the sand. All right, let's get a zoom video. Sticking up at all? It's just laying on it. It's yeah. laying down on the sand. Little trick of the eye there. Yeah. Potentially some, yeah, some black darker sediment or like rock. Fecal, fecal material or something. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Quelled the curiosity. So we're sitting on a, a large plateau that sits on the side of uh, McCall Seamount. And uh, this is, it's kind of unusual to see a large flat plateau like this. And it has some basalt outcrop, but an amazing amount of just this flat sand, sandy seafloor. Someone's asking about the... You want, you want to stay a little closer to her because uh, we're going down the hill. Okay. So yep. for her to come down, she can't come down because she doesn't have a lot underneath her. But okay. you can, if you want to, you can zoom north and south. Okay. If you want to explore. So keep it 10, 15 meters, something like that? Yeah, I was staying a little closer because uh, you'll run out of leash sooner. And sure. she's She's got about the same... Delta yep. as altitude, which is atypical for Atlanta. It usually has way more altitude than it does Delta. What, you get, what we need is a slant range readout. Yeah. yeah and this should Could be probably make that happen. This should be the last bit of downhill we'll go through, and then shrimp. And after this, it'll it'll all be uphill, gradually at first, and then and then hopefully. Yeah. How do you tell on this thing when it changes from downhill to uphill? Uh, the shading. Or? How how do I tell? Oh, how do, how do, uh, yeah, that's a, it's actually difficult down it, here. There yeah, is a little bit of shading, but... Uh, yeah, you kind of uh, have to just keep track of the contours yeah. unless the shading is closer to... Right. All right. right that, so that is going to be a low... We're, we're entering right, right there, so right it should here. be a low saddle. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so it should be relatively flat until we hit that contour that your cursor is on. Yeah, so... so See you, Cucumber. Right about where it says uh, where the letters waypoint three are, not where actually the waypoint is, um, well, yeah, r r right about there should be the, yeah. uh, about the lowest point. It looks like uh, Atlanta's about at the lowest point. If you look at the hinting of blue all around at the 40-meter uh, range ring. Mm. Could be. I never 100% yeah, I I trust that either. Yeah. No, I think it's, it, it should be right about where the waypoint 3 point is, and then after that it'll, it'll start gradually going up. And it's not until we get to waypoint six that uh, we really start climbing steeply, and that that's clear even on the on the uh, high pack display as the contours come closer together and you start seeing the color change even too. So, uh, Chris, I, I don't know if you can if if you can stretch the color map in that high pack display, and that might be no, a way to. No, you can't. Unfortunately, they're all pre-generated. Uh, oh, okay. IPAC doesn't have the ability to load um, floating point. Ti well, it can load floating point tips, but it can't dynamically render them, mm -hmm. which is uh, unfortunate. Oh, I keep grabbing the camera.
camera tilt instead of the altitude stick. Yeah. And for a second, the camera tilt makes you think that you're going up. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so somebody's asking about the roster of the, uh, those of that. us that are on watch. Right, you can switch back to uh, porch on the bubble cam if you want. Mm. Rachel and Jonathan are kind of everywhere all at once. <laughs> so they're not listed. Um, and then uh, somebody's asking about facts about cucumber, sea cucumbers. It doesn't seem like there would be a lot of them uh, for them to eat here. Well, yeah, when so you eat sand, there's a lot of things to eat. Yeah, they're detritivores. So what, basically, what they do is they they sift through that sand for any particles uh, of detritus or uh, microbes, uh, and then what comes out the other end is just the sand without all of that in it. So yeah, they're ingesting the sediment that you're seeing here. So it's honestly, I guess, I don't know why in some soft sediment areas we don't see sea cucumbers, and I'm not sure why we're not seeing that many. Um, but yeah, they will just feed on that sediment there. And usually you can see their um, fecal trail behind them. Mm. It's quite interesting. And if we see it, I'll yeah, point it out. Compared to many kind of flat, uninteresting seafloors yeah, I've seen, uh, this has much less indication of burrowing or any yeah. kind of, uh, and, and, and again, we've also had, uh, had less, um, Indication of even on even on the the outcrops of uh, right, corals and carnies, and I'm wondering if there's something sheltered about this. Clearly a current here, yeah. But I'm wondering if it's just sheltered from the overall flow of nutrients um, around the seamount. And we'll see when the, the real the real test is when we get to the to the very peak. Oh, and what we'll see that? there. That's gorgeous. Oh, here we go. Oh, this one of your it's a big one. One of your eels. I think a synaphobranchid. Oh, yeah, a synaphobranchid cutthroat eel. Cutthroat eel. Cutthroat eel. Mm. Sounds like an ominous name. Yeah. They are quite He's spooky. So we're heading west, uh, east for the most part. And we're following basically uh, along the crests of the ripples. A slight deviation. That it does imply, as as everything else has indicated, the current's probably coming from the west, southwest or so, heading northeast. We've got some admirers of eels riding in. <laughs> so now we've just come. That one's begging for a pirouette. All right. Look at all the uh, yeah. scouring there. Yep. Yeah. So it seems backwards. Well, it, it looks in this case, it looks like the the rock is sheltering a flow coming from the the narrower end of the rock. That that that, that it, and we have flow around. Now the anything that sticks up is going to perturb the flow. All right. And, and you can see the ripples kind of moving around on one side. 
at the top, nice the top side of the screen. But the uh, the stones are. You're not on SBL. Are we recording, Jonathan? So, or? so the implication is the flow is coming from the bottom of the the bottom of the uh, frame. Right. You're not on SPL. Moving around the outcrop, sheltered right behind it, and then it recoalesces on the other side. Stopping time lapse. Oh, so I get it, I get it. So there's not sediment there covering the... I don't know, so my much. reptile brain is struggling with that. I am. Can't mess with no pirate. And there's a beautiful example. The ripples have come around the point on the rock. See, they're all diverted by that. Just swing the other way. Fascinating. Yeah. It's like a refraction kind what's of thing. That, yep, exactly. uh, what's that exactly. white That's really line? Cool. <laughs> yeah. What's that white line there? White, uh, white in line. the nook of the rock on Triclops? Say again? Top left, that white line. Yeah, all right. Uh, a, Could be a, a coral skeleton, but I'm not sure. Probably shouldn't be encouraging this kind of. Yeah, I'm, I'm shocked. Should be telling you <laughs> to get going, but well, look at that. What is that? I think it might be a coral skeleton. All right, can we zoom video? Yeah, copy. That had fallen I mostly over. just feel bad for Manal. Got to give her something to do over there. <laughs> a solid zoom. Yeah. What is that? What is that? Yeah. Either coral or sponge. I'm not seeing the banding from, I don't think, at least. I don't think I see any black bands on there. That would indicate a bamboo coral. Well, it might, if she irises down a little bit, you might pick them up. I see them there. It was hard to. Yeah, yeah, I think you can start making oh, them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the lower screen. zoom in a little more. Bamboo coral. Yeah, good. Huh. Yeah. That might just be the sediment on Could there. Could be just dirt. <laughs> Could be dirt. Yeah. Some stalk of either a sponge or coral. Okay. Great. Yeah. We move on. Cool. Oh, How that. close are we to greatness here? Oh, no. Not so much. <laughs> Not till here. Oh. Uh, Taylor, and we trying, have a question about to... polyps. How, can, how long can they survive? Uh-oh. That's a good question. Um, so... Some of the large corals that we've been seeing, um, the ones that are, you know, maybe a meter tall or so, could be potentially 100 years or older. Probably um, follow that feature a bit to your left if you want it, just for to uh, run out of It also other. just depends if, you know, that's an ideal snack for, you it's know, right for way. say a sea cucumber, or not a sea cucumber, a sea Cut star. Cut right across in front of Atalanta and then turn and go the other way. They like to feed on the polyps, so and, and Dan, potentially it, a short it, life. You see where the waypoints are lying? I don't, yep. I, don't, I don't think we want to head totally due east because we'll be just on more and more flat. I think we can have a, a much steeper route, probably more interesting. Um, if we if we did have had uh, yeah, southeast, we're, we're gonna we're just yeah, we just crossed that one waypoint, so it's time to yep. change course. We're just now crossing waypoint three. Right. So I'm gonna change the uh, ship's bearing here. Thank you. Uh, he's got 40 meters left on this move, and then uh, we'll change it the bearing to to get to uh, waypoint four. If you right click waypoint four, you can select it and it'll give you, you can automatically get Argus bearings. Just right click. Right click select. There you go. Yeah, I already had it worked out. Yeah. It's um, um, one degree off of my <coughs> seat of the pants nav here. <laughs> Now we see the ripples. Since you overshot, though, you probably want to... Turn Overlaying the basalt? Ooh, Over, yeah, cucumber. Cucumber. very, very thin thin amount of sediment. That's Look at that cucumber. <laughs> Absolutely yeah, astounding. Yeah, it's a cinelactid. See cucumber. Ooh, cinelactid. 
Well, okay, you I'll have to boogie woogie now and get out in front of her again. Yep. We got a suggestion for your Halloween costume. This is when you can get the speed run. <laughs> I just, we don't have my graph up. See how fast you can go without augering into the sand. That's right. <laughs> uh, low, yeah, low pass, Chris. Huh? Crowd pleasing pass. Permission to buzz the tower. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that round <laughs> thing. A viewer's asking, where did the big slabs of rock come from? Where did the big slabs of rock come from? I, I assume these are lava flows, and I suspect they That's came cool. from the original formation of the seamount, which was, believe it or not, 80 million years ago, but it kept, still kept swept 80 clean. 80 million years? Although I, I'd say they look really fresh to me, and that's what's so confusing. I really wish we had a, a basalt petrologist here to look at this. That's um, incredible. And I tied up this rift here. Looks like that all. But I think when we have these, uh, currents and, and steep slopes that it manages to keep the sediment that should be constantly falling down clear and so we're still seeing the the original outcrops yeah and then uh, somebody's just asking about you know a lot some of this looks like it has broken now when when, when, yeah, the, that was when the lava cools it, it certainly cracks um, and, and many pieces break off. Can we have bit breaking later? I, I think if there was earthquake activity around, and I don't think this is a particularly, well, we're not that far from uh, bridge now. From the hot spot, and I wonder if that causes some seismicity. Zero, zero degrees. You could have earthquake activity that could cause fractures, but I suspect still that if we're seeing some of that original 100, texture, 100, got it. take us to the north of waypoint four a little but then we can go uphill when well, I we think do. Our, I think it's gonna yep. take a bit for that curve yeah, yeah. to happen. That, that's, yeah, don't don't do anything drastic. Just I just wanna yeah, no. start try to the avoid turn. avoid the big, big flat yeah. area between the contours. And I think the more we can stay where the contours are tight, the uh, the more chance we have to see things. Uh, Roger. Yeah, in general, tight contour is good. Unless you want to make a airstrip or something like that. Um, runway, you don't want. Unless you're doing a fish transect, or, uh, bioturbation transect. Yeah. <laughs> Tilt up just a bit with your Zeus for me. Good night. Yeah, just so it starts to turn dark at the top, light at the bottom, no yeah. shadows. Uh, we got a couple of questions. Is this uh, too deep to have been affected by depth charges from World War II? I suspect so, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think uh, depth charges, particularly in World War II, were set to go off much, much uh, shallower than the kind of depths we're at. Where, where are we at now, 1,700 meters yeah. on that order? I think World War II so you, submarines would, what, maybe two, 300 feet at Exa most? Exactly. Yeah. 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 Hey, Dan, nope. what do you think of, uh, I might turn transparency off for the uh, starboard camera, port camera. Make it pop a little bit more. Yeah, could do that. Yeah. Let's try that. Let's see how that looks. Someone asked about trawling, but this would be too deep for trawling, right? Yeah, I think this would be uh, way too deep for trawling. Yeah, huh. so, so you certainly do see where there is trawling going on. You see uh, evidence of that trawling in terms of scour marks and things like that on the seafloor, but, but not at these depths. And, and I think we've also seen there's not much to trawl for here. Uh, but but it, I'm just intrigued by the, the cracks and the fractures in, in these pieces here. And, and you know, is, is that really the original preserving of the original texture? I, 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 
And for those of you watching, we are at almost about 1,800 meters depth. We're at 1,780. Yeah, that, make, that makes a little more sense. Yeah, right? Yeah. Especially once we go up against a rock or something. Yeah. Um, would this lava have flowed while well under the water or above the water? Yeah, probably. There's probably some of both. Uh, I would think when when the, the seamount was originally created, it was probably mostly created underwater. The, uh, this one doesn't have a flat top at all. There's there's several seamounts near here, particularly cross seamount, which has a very flat top, which means at one time it was it was raised above water, but. But in the original uh, creation of the volcano, you know, 80 or so million years ago, it is quite possible that some of that happened um, above sea level, and then it subsided down. Um, and that would preserve the shape. If it's a, it subsided or sunk fast enough, it would preserve its volcanic shape like this one has um, without having spent a lot of time near sea level to get that flat top. Can you get a reset DVL, Dan? Uh, maybe, let's see, how do I... Uh, okay, uh, yeah, send reset, yeah. Just send reset? Yeah, and it'll reset it to the USBL. Yeah. Well, that's easy. Yeah, the other, if you can, drop, another a, way. You can drop a cursor in manually, yeah. place it, that's which painful. if it's really noising, if it's really noisy though, sometimes that's what you want to do. Yeah. Do we ever find trash this deep? What's the deepest trash that has been found in our oceans? Oh, that's a that's a sad question. Yeah, I think we certainly we haven't seen much trash. I, I, certainly on my watch, this watch, I don't think we've actually seen any man-made items on this leg. But I've had many many times uh, in water deeper than this where we see things. And yeah. if we think about where the deepest part of the ocean is the Marianas Trench, um, and there have been now several submersible dives to the bottom of the Marianas Trench, and sadly, even there, the pieces of trash were found. Yeah, yeah it's been quite a clean expedition th so thus far, which is always a you know, good thing to see. I think so far we've seen maybe two cans, a can or two, and that's about it. Um, we oh. saw a Bud Light can, and another unidentified can at some point but and there was the rope that we got hung up on and then yeah the line yeah, yeah. Uh, that's true Ooh, boy we had a close encounter with a shrimp there. What happened to my good fidget spinner? I thought I put it up before I left. I think it's in there. In here? Yeah. Um, someone's asking, what's the anticipated uh, on deck time today? Uh, I think 8 p.m. local time here, so uh, 8 p.m. Hawaiian uh, Hawaiian time. Aha. <laughs> or as we say on the ship, 20 hundred hours. Yes. Now you can do uh, gyroscope precession experiments. Oh, it's a bit rusty. Oh. There's another one, too. Yeah, this is one of the old ones. Oh, My youngest printed this, oh. drew this and printed it all by himself when he was like nine. There should be another one in here that's uh, not quite so old. Yeah. What you looking for there, Dan? Uh, fidget spinners. Toys. Ah, toys. <laughs> he doesn't have knobs in front of him to play with. So. <laughs> My kids, uh, they bought a couple 3D printers when they were younger and, um, they started off with Tinkercad, and uh, they were when the fidget spinner craze. And uh, one of the printers was pretty straightforward to use, so they could, uh, at 9 and 11, uh, draw and print fidget spinners 
by themselves, so I soon had a salad bowl in the kitchen full of fidget spinners yeah, and yeah, <laughs> all yeah, kinds yeah. of wonky, strange, crazy shapes. That's kind of cool, though. One of the favorites was the cat one here with the uh, half-inch ball bearings for weights. I thought that was pretty clever of them to... Dan, a viewer is asking if you remember the appliances that were discovered on the bottom. What if what, there was what? Appliances? Yeah. Uh, some of the craziest uh, things you find on the bottom are, uh, well, it depends on where you're working in the world, but. Um, one of the jobs I did in... Uh, Pan left there for a sec. There's something on the bottom there. To the left? Left, yep. And forward there. Just curious. Uh, we did a job in Malaysia where uh, it's shallow water there, so they have the old school jackets that I was talking about on the on the platforms. And there's you know, it's like a string of platforms along. We were doing a, what we call a dive support job. So the ROV supports the divers. We're basically yep. a... Looks like just a... Yeah just, a rock. yeah, just a little rock outcrop. Yep. We're basically a flying, uh, you know, tool gopher and hydraulic power unit for them. And, uh, anyways, the, those platforms were been around probably since the 70s. And uh, every appliance that ever, or battery or any kind of anything, they just tossed it over the side. So there was literally several meters around the whole rig and one of our jobs while we weren't uh, supporting the uh, divers we would put a giant basket on the seabed the size of this control van and we would run around with the ROV and pick up stuff and put in the basket so it was great fun because we were you know basically unsupervised whatever we could lift <laughs> we could pick it up and drag it or you know and, and you, we and you were, do you were doing good with respect to cleaning the ocean, too. Yeah. So, yeah, there was uh, all kinds of appliances, uh, furniture, uh, motors, batteries. It was just absolutely crazy. We, we had to uh, clear a path. Uh, they were putting uh, new updated uh, power and telemetry cables between the, between the rigs, between the jackets. Video, could we get a Jonathan zoom? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, oh, Jonathan, just for you. That's a nice shot, actually. Yeah. Oh yeah. Next week on Discovery Channel, sea <laughs> cucumbers as you've never seen them before. <laughs> <laughs> they're purple. They're transparent, and they love sand. You could have totally have a cucumber reality show. It's going to go, sorry, going off the rails there. Last Cucumber week. Cucumberiest catch. <laughs> Ooh. That's, that's a right, good title. Point. Copy that. Last week on Days of Our Cucumber Lives. <laughs> Martha's fight with Jane continues. <laughs> He's is my cucumber, not yours. Is this Martha or is this Jake? I think that's Jake. Keep an eye on your move there. You think sea cucumbers right. get lonely? So the have to stop. Yep. Aww. Yep. Look at them just sitting here. I don't know. Are they hermaphroditic? I think they're going to go wild. Oh, yeah, that's go, true. Uh, yes. I think you're right. I think it's probably right. Yeah. 140 ish. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we're really lingering here on those sea cucumber guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the next one's going to be uh, 140 Oreo. Instead of shrimp on the right, I think. Sorry, what's that? Yeah, you can change head if you need. It's going to be, uh, yeah, we're going to do like 250 meters, 140. Yeah, around 200, 140. So the ship has reached uh, waypoint four here. And uh, Hercules and Argus are probably a ship length away from the waypoint, 60, 70 meters, something like that. And now uh, we're going to change the ship's bearing to uh, hit waypoint five. 
And can you zoom out, please, on that right there, so hyperservice yeah. display? Got a bigger picture for a sec. Ah, wrong zoom. Thank you. Say when. Okay, yeah. Well, keep going. Let's let's see the whole the whole picture. Yeah. Uh, I've zoomed okay. right off the map. Yeah. Okay. Let's see how far up we get. Is that? Uh, I got, I'm guessing uh, Renius calculated waypoint eight will be time to recover yeah. before yeah. we get well, there. Well, I think yeah, I think, but that was before the delays this morning. So. Oh yeah. Pesky Ethernet ball. I, I tend to zoom in on HIPAC where I can actually make sense of the uh, ship and the vehicles. Why can't I remember the names of those uh, dog toys, Octocoros? Taylor Ann reminded me yesterday, and now I've forgotten already. The what, Octocoral? The ones I always call a dog toy. Dog toy. Or the mushroom coral. Ah, uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Roger. I can't remember the scientific name. Oh, uh, so if it has a really long stem to it, it's the anthemastis. Yeah. And if it's the short one, it's the pseudo anthemastis. Pseudo anthemastis. So it's an imposter, essentially. <laughs> Yeah, uh, usually the anthemastis are a little bit brighter red, I've noticed, but I think that just, yeah. yeah, I don't think that means anything. And that is a classic example of why ROVs don't back up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shrimp. Probably uh, turn to the north there and follow that feature for a while. You got time. Oh, uh, what's that guy out in the out in the distance? That big old coral. Yeah, yeah, it looks like a coral. Can't tell which kind, but. Oh, kind of peters out pretty quick. Yeah, that was it? the end of that. Was a good. Was a good thought. Uh, you were saying there's also the heteropoly. Oh, there is a coral in the background there. Mushroom coral. Oh, wonder how many polyps had to land around here for that single coral to find a home on that <laughs> one little tiny rock. Ooh. Jumper. Oh, yeah. Complete, completely forgot about the heteropolypus. Yeah. Um, they're also more like pink and bright. Uh, the pseudoanthemasis, uh, or the anthemasis rather, usually are really tall stems underneath them. Um, but this heteropolypus, yeah, looks more similar to the pseudoanthemasis. Pseudoanthemasis. Thank you. Yeah, that's a heading change. Oh my god. Right, because again, gosh. it tracks here, not cookie. here, so. This Larry cookie is the same cookies. color as basalt. <laughs> they're, 
basalt cookies. Oh my gosh. Maybe this is they ground up yesterday's manganese. <laughs> so everybody's going to go real quiet for a second. Oh. <laughs> I think I have a new piloting goal, to find the wispiest, forkiest things and do pirouettes around there to really make Jonathan's measure work for its dinner. Yeah, that's something your sonar can't do. Ooh. You sure? Yeah, I am. <laughs> you sure? Wanna, yeah, you wanna have a sonar duel? Yeah. I'll throw some Nerf models at this, son. Do you have a measure that can actually like do this fine structure? No, that's what nerf modeling is for. Yeah. Neural radiance fields. It's the new generation of uh, computational learning for things that are transparent. Okay. Luma.ai is a pretty awesome application. I'm, I'm pretty sure that I actually have a model loaded up. Let's check it out on Luma.ai. Uh, but yeah, I'd like to check this out because anytime I've done SFM stuff, you know, tree branches and. Yeah and corals and that kind of thing are all, they just make a mess. I usually just leave them as point clouds. I cut them out of the model and mesh the ground and then leave those as point clouds and render them as billboards or something. Oh, it's lumalabs.ai. Well, yeah, I have been experimenting with this uh, new technique called uh, neural radiance fields. And on, there's a couple of uh, cloud-based ones already. And I got it working on the, uh, at our local um, HPC cluster at um, High Performance Computing cluster at the uh, University of Rhode Island. But it does take a long time. Yeah. Is that how you made the model of the coral I saw the other night? No, that was a regular one. That's a regular structure for motion. The it was uh, dense enough to do a regular yeah, and if you zoom in, you'll still see that it doesn't really handle the details. Um, sign in with Google. But uh, that that's what neural radiance fields do extremely well, and I can't even come close to understanding it. Oh, but I know it does. ChatGPT. Yeah, see? No one's going to do anything with that. That glass sponge, glass sponge, Walteria. Wow, look at you. Thank you. Into a biologist. Thank you. <laughs> Taylor Ann, I noticed something I yeah, glowing I can on the last Walteria. Well, yeah, I don't you know if you got enough leash well? to get around it. Yeah. No, glowing? No. Yeah, like it seemed like it was like. Glowy? I don't know. We're way past it now, so we can't yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I didn't and... notice that. That sounds interesting. Yeah. Uh, you might have enough leash to do a 180, 180, or a 180, 360. A 180, 360, 180. It's like snowboarding. You know what moves. I mean? Yeah. Ryan could uh, probably come down a couple meters to get dangerously low just to give you enough leash to get around the backside there, because you're going to get tight there. And then you uh, struggle and then wind up dusting it. Yeah. Already I can feel it. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Is that a dead sponge behind the rock? Like there on the oh bottom? yeah, maybe. Let's see. You should be able to, now 360 or 270 Wait, around the other way. This, this guy is down here. Uh, can we get a zoom video? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I see the hold fast at the far end. Yeah. Oh, is that what you want to see? No, 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 that's right. No. Okay, yeah, go ahead. All right, copy. Yeah. Let's see here. Cool. Noise. All right, come wide. All righty.
can come back up if you want now, all right? That's good now. So when you're in auto depth and you use the I stick, never do. Okay, it doesn't, you just get where you want and then hold? Yeah. That it, doesn't like adjust the set point or something? It, it does, right into the seabed. Okay, good. Yeah, <laughs> neat. Is the set point listed somewhere? Or? Yeah, on the on the uh, auto XY page, the to go. So for Z, if you have it in uh, auto depth right now. Yeah. So if oh, you, so the goal is to. Yeah, the goal is to go. So if you hold that, it'll change that. Yeah, but it goes quick. Yeah, dangerously yeah. quick. It's uh, typical of any ROV to use. Uh, to change altitude with an either one of your auto yeah. depth or auto altitude on because the ROV doesn't know where the seabed is. Yeah, with these types of systems, I kind of like when you move the stick, it basically goes into manual. And then when you that's let the stick be. off, yeah. it, it just picks up auto again. So that's how it works. So that's a, an identified bug with this software. Yeah. So that's how it works with auto heading. For example, if you click in auto heading, and you can set on the XYZ page uh, heading, yeah. what the steps are there. So right now the velocity is two and the steps are one degree. So if you wank it over now in auto heading, you'll see the little yellow needle move. And oh, and that's what it's headed. And that's what it's yeah. aiming for. And if you crank that step up to like ten, you'll see it move rapidly. But then when you oh, let go, okay. it grabs the current set point, the current heading of the vehicle. That's the new set point. So, oh, all right. So that's a proper auto hit, uh, auto function. So when you have your hand on the stick, you have control. When you let go, it returns to the auto function. Yeah. So auto depth and altitude should work that way, but they do not. Okay. And that's so we've gone through all the uh, all of that business at uh, we do every year at Shakedown, but we revisit it again, and we have a list of. Uh, uh, all of that stuff that doesn't behave as desired. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, there's a there's a reason why it was done the way it was done. Um, mm -hmm. If you're doing more midwater stuff, uh, or if you're doing like a free flyer, you yeah. want to be able to increment your auto with your stick. Yeah. That's the that was the rationale behind it, but in practice. It yeah, see, I feel like if you want to do that, you need to, like, have a slider on the screen exactly. or a slider here or something, yeah. not this, because this, like, means I'm flying. Yeah, so... And it should behave like you're flying. Uh, the way it works, uh, for example, with the Green Sea system, you can select either way. Yeah. And But uh, mostly it's a, a click, a button click. So you're clicking, you have your auto dialed in, right? And yeah. you want to go down two meters... You can set what the button click increment is. Yeah. So you can make that a 10 meter click or a one meter click or similar to changing the step points there. Yeah. But yeah, it, be, it becomes, uh, and that's real useful for like launching and recovering a free flyer where you're, you have to launch and then bring the vehicle down a meter or two meters at a time as you're snapping floats on the umbilical. Right. <coughs> And it's very helpful for doing that. It's almost, you know, a must-have because you got to uh, control your depth as well as your distance from the vessel to keep the umbilical hanging nicely so the personnel on the deck can uh, snap the floats on without the umbilical under tension. Right. But it becomes a liability on the seabed when you can inadvertently change your right. depth to uh, stuff it into the mud. <laughs> Thus, the, the ability to switch back and forth. But yeah, I prefer any of the controls, like the Dynacon winch, for example, when it's in control up here, but if I walk out to the social deck and deflect the lever, mm -hmm. I have control of it yeah. right now. Yeah. And same with the auto functions. No matter what state the vehicle's in, if I grab the stick yeah, it and should, move it, you should, it, I should, should have control. Do what yeah. you want to do, yeah. And then when I want to you know, have a coffee break, I just let go of the stick and yeah. go get my cup of coffee, and right. it should stay right where it is. And that is indeed how the like the shilling vehicle works. But that took, uh, yeah, it took a 
And same with Green Sea, but it, it took a while to get there. Just communication between the operators and the and the person writing the software. Uh, the other gotcha one is um, Auto XY behaves uh, similar, but not quite. So I forget what the there's a nuance difference there. Uh, but in in true Auto XY, it should hold position while you have it, and then move while you're moving the joystick. And as soon as you let go, it should in a graceful manner, grab the current position. Yeah. It should. Um, then that's where some of the tuning comes in, because as you let go of it, if it grabs it too quick, the uh, if the thrusters are moving one way, they'll just completely go full command the other way to yeah. try and grab that set point, and then right. you'll disturb the visibility or the you know will tear the vehicle apart because it's trying so hard so fast. Yeah. Same with Auto XY, it should slowly slow the velocity down and then grab, you know, once the velocity is under a certain speed, it should then grab that as a set point. Uh, the Hammerhead software, you can, you can do that either way. You can drive it in velocity mode. So when you're in Auto XY in velocity mode, you're commanding uh, speed over ground with a DBL in X or Y. When you're in uh, station keep mode, uh, you're commanding just the uh, thruster RPMs. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. And it, it's nice uh, to be able to do uh, velocity mode with a joystick. There's, you know, mostly you do that with buttons, how you do with this vehicle. But mm -hmm. in some instances, it's nice to uh, do the velocity mode. For example, when we have ROV day and we get, you know, the entire galley staff in here operating the ROV, <laughs> put the uh, training wheels on it. By the way, for the record, you flew right through waypoint four. Oh yeah. Once a nav, always a nav. <laughs> But that's not where we really wanted to go. What? Ju just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, we should change our names, Larry, from yes. Waypoint to uh, something soft point. <laughs> Maybe point. Maybe point. point. I would like to just point out how uh, useless the current sonar is and how Chris is currently using visual means to pilot. <laughs> uh, using good old-fashioned right old fashioned photons. No. Oh, if, if, if you true, do look at the Adelon, the Adelon sector scanner, though, it's, it's actually... Uh, you, uh, can't, you can't trust that, though. Oh. That can't. says that there's even things that are semi-hard somewhere. There are? Uh, We're going to start climbing whoop. uphill, though. See? I spy a Walteria. Negative. I spy. <laughs> no, I'm right. <laughs> I can't tell from here what it is. It's Yellow. either a Trechoplura, the one that I can't pronounce. Trechoplura. <laughs> or a polyopgon. Polyopgon. There we go. Polyopgon. But I think it's a, tetr a Tetraplura. <sighs> yeah, for the record, we don't trust any of the instruments, but we constantly rely on them and it's not just one instrument, including our visual, that we we rely on. We have the human Kalman filter up here. And do, 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 do. Oh, look at him. <laughs> Look all, at it. All alone. Sponges are challenging. 
for uh, video over there with the iris. Oh yeah, you can see you can see the uh, stereo cams don't know what to do with the bright white object. No. Neither does Manel. She's trying. Though. <laughs> <laughs> She's got it. She's got it. She's got it. I've sat over there as well, and, and I know that the sponges are uh, really difficult to. You've got it there. You see it just pop. You can see the detail. Absolutely incredible. It's a miracle of life. What do you decide, Taylor? On? Yeah, it's a. Uh, well. Actually, no. <laughs> now that I'm seeing the side of it, the megaphone sponge. Megaphone sponge. Yeah. Is that a, did you That's just make that up, or is that, that a no. very scientific <laughs> name? <laughs> it looks like one of the, it looks uh, like a poi leaf. You can totally get away. It. You can totally get away with poi. that, you know, when you're the only biologist in the room. <laughs> no, the audience is always watching. Oh, taro. Mm. Uh, I think I'm gonna Tretto have it. Di di today. I think I'm going to have some taro bubble tea when I get a port. You can head over to oh, <laughs> like taro? The, oh, the, yeah. the taro root? The taro root. Our, yeah. our first yellow sonar target in a while. At oh, wow. 40 meters. Ooh. Let's go. We're going. 10 meters a minute. Woot, 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 woot. As it happens, we have uh, 40 meters left on this move. So Incredible. I have to figure out what to do after that. Dan can just intuit how far the sonar targets are going to be. He's learning in an app. A viewer's asking if this would be a bad place to land. Would it be like quicksand? No, no, it wouldn't be like quicksand yeah, at all. Hey, there's another one of those little stringy things. Yeah. Just regular type sand. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah, just regular type sand, whip. and I suspect it's not very deep before it, you'd get down to... The bedrock below. It's a bad place to land with uh, respect to visibility. So you can see in Atlanta's uh, feet as uh, Chris lifts off there, he brings a giant dust cloud with him. So depending on which way the current's <coughs> moving or what the ROV is doing, if we were, for example, hanging out in this neighborhood for a while, uh, we would have zero visibility. And uh, if we were wanting to look at, scientists were wanting to look at something, uh, for example, to the left of where we just landed, we would be dragging a giant uh, dust cloud with us, and they get uh, you know, it, it, it could be a one-of-a-kind specimen that we may or may not see again, and, it, and if the visibility is disrupted and they can't see it, it could be, you know, literally the difference between a PhD or uh, career as, as a librarian, so uh, we we take it seriously when we consider landing. We value librarians yeah, very librarians much here at the Ocean necessary. Exploration Trust. Don't you need a master's to be a librarian? <laughs> uh, yes, you do need a a, a degree beyond uh, your undergraduate. How also you don't know what that Dewey Decimal System is doing? Sneaky. Why the camera feels so much smoother than it has in the past? Uh, it's because of the depth, so our uh, the flow controls are set with a needle valve, yeah, yeah. which are uh, were brand new uh, at the beginning of the year, and they're currently rusted shut because they are not uh, meant for subsea use. Yeah. What? And so our flow control is set basically where we set that, and we set that for our deepest dive so the camera moves nicely. But on deck, it's really fast, and at depth with the... Uh, increased pressure and the, uh, the temperature change, the viscosity of the oil is more like syrup right. than it is uh, uh, on deck where it's more like water. So everything moves slower at depth. Okay, gotcha. And yeah, yesterday we were at, I think when you were operating, uh, we were at, we were at uh, Can you move just a couple, oh sorry, you know, now. horrible navigator. I need a reset soon, though. I don't know what our uh, the pings are kind of all over the place. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's the EKF would be nice to have even in there, even as another reset source. Mm -hmm. What's EKF? The I have a common filter running for the the mapping. Oh yeah. And that's that the green line that you're seeing in high pack is the common filter track. All right. Which does not need to be reset. Yeah. Why don't we have a common filter on the? I don't know. We used to. We did it at Shakedown, and then they upgraded NavG, and it didn't get ported. Oh. You're looking up quite a bit with your Zeus camera now. What's that, Taylor Ann? So that's a dead ferret sponge right there. Uh, and then the, next to it is a, a Ritigorgia coral, or the firework coral. Ooh. Yeah, the frayed sponges to me look like vertebra. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, if, you asked, if you asked me, I'd say it was a fish skeleton. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can totally see that. Yeah, Roger, let's do another, um, I don't know, dealer's choice, 50 meters, 100 meters, 140. <laughs> Sorry, I let that one go too long. Bad navigator. Yeah, come on, man. You're going to get demoted <laughs> here, Dan. Demoted to the back bus to driver. Back to ROV pilot. Oh no. All right. Yeah. <laughs> we all right, have. Back yeah. About a. You. We got about another hundred meters to go, and we'll uh, change you more to the uh, west again. I uh, sorry to the east. I also get those backwards. Right at that. One hundred one four zero. Yeah, you can always cancel the move, right? Yep. Not carved in stone. Kind of uh, another uh, 10 meters or so, Atlantis. Telling you it's going to get steeper. No, no, just making you aware the yellow's slowly creeping in with maybe a few hints of red in your future. the auto XY functionality. Oh, okay. So it will, uh, it's like a little red hat flip switch. Right, oh, okay. Safety switch. So the base maybe should be called the arm button. Yeah. That button also has the added uh, functionality of making Gabby laugh hysterically while she's yeah. trying to pilot the ROV. That is entertaining, yeah. It is very entertaining. For those of you joining us, we're a little under 1,800 meters depth, uh, 1749 to be exact. And we are exploring McCall Seamount. Is it a little sea urchins or something? Uh, Let's see, uh, it looks like the one we yeah, we, saw we claimed as a rock earlier, but... With the sponges. It, yeah, I'm still stumped urchin. on this one. I think you can see we his can little feet it? underneath him. Yep, absolutely. Two feet. Yeah. 
You think those are associates on the end of his uh, little tentacles? Yeah, this one, yeah, it looks like it might be. Yeah. You good if I go tighter? This one kind of looks more like a urchin no than the other one. It looks less rock-like. It does. <laughs> it was a toss-up. I'm really stumped on this one. Let me look at the cratoderms. Nice dust cloud. Yeah, I dusted him. Beautiful. Skywriting. Yeah. Smoke machine. I have never heard that analogy before. It's a good one. That's what I need for the RC airplane. It's a smoke generator. Yeah. Now that would be a blast. I had one on one of my planes that was very messy. Yeah, that was why I didn't do it. The gas engine is much cleaner than the nitro. It doesn't oh, like make everything all greasy and nasty. Yeah. And I'm like, I maybe don't want to go flip back to the greasy game. A viewer is writing in that it's a sea urchin with barnacles. Barnacles. Bonk. Mm. Trying to find the species name for the urchin. Let's get a zoom video. Yep, copy. Zoom in. Uh, that yeah. is a, a stalked eupectel. Ooh. Ooh. Might uh, find a shrimp at home in there if you look around a little bit. Yeah, stalked is, I can't tell if it's, uh, I think it's a eupectel. It might be like the ET sponge, this one yeah. here. <laughs> or bolosoma. Yeah, that's that's more scientific. It's delicious. But yeah, here it is here. Oh, listen. Doesn't look like anybody's home. No. No. All right, come on. Copy. Bolisomene, species one. See, that's a good trick. When you start like losing yeah. tracking, you just say, come wide, like you're ready to go anyway. Totally. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's oh, a, there's yeah. a star on yeah. that one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Worth a look. W would that be another predation event? Potentially, yeah. I haven't seen a sea star on top of a sponge can like we this. Go back. So. Can we zoom in on that sea star? Yes. Yep. Yeah, get a good look he at it. He jumped. This. He jumped. Yeah, copy. Oh, this will be fun. Yeah. I'm depressed. Let's see. A bit more? Yep. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Let's see. There we go. Take that video compression. <laughs> Maybe this, uh, well, the dust will settle a little bit and get a clear view. Yeah, we got about 30 seconds there. Yeah. Gotcha. Oh. 60 seconds, maybe. Dan, would you mind uh, zooming out on the yeah. IPAC survey? Certainly. Screen, please. All right, there we go. A little That's less dust. nice. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, come on. Copy That's that. good. That's good. Roger. So, here... Here was a saddle, and now, I know, but that's that's the low point right there. Oh, oh my gosh. Wow. wow. There's a Ooh. large one, yeah. That's typical of waiting, so you're, you're planning on hurrying up <laughs> to get out. <laughs> right. and there's some of course. <laughs> I can at least do a little bit of that action as we, totally. oh, yeah. as we boogie. Totally. Wow. That's that's incredible. What what kind of what kind of coral or sponge is that? Uh, it looks like a type of frayed sponge. Frayed sponge. It happens to me every time. I yeah. wait too long. Something that's marginal uh, and then a don't have time to look at something that's spectacular. It looked like like a 
a bit like a spine. Gotta get a DVR reset. Yeah, yeah, so the ones that we've been seeing uh -huh. falling down uh -huh. um, are the same species, uh, oh, wow. potentially. You want to reset uh, it? Or at least the same yeah. uh, in Freya Day. Or, it's, yeah, we're in line Freya now, Day. let's see how we diverge there. That is so cool, yeah. I'm glad we're we got to see one alive. Yeah, yeah, we haven't seen, I think it's that was the first live right one right. we actually saw. The others that Done. we saw might have been upright, but they were already dead. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are officially waypoint five. I'm going to change his. Uh, yeah. Are you going to go back now, Dan? Is that? Uh, we're Button. gonna yep. we're gonna change the uh, ship's bearing to. Uh, oh, there's that's what's gonna change it. Yeah, please. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we've hit we've hit. Uh, right. We've nailed. Look at that. We've nailed every single waypoint like bang on. We got the Again, we didn't want to go there, but th but that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Larry's like, I really don't care. <laughs> A viewer's I just lost the plot now. <laughs> just go to waypoint six. <laughs> yeah, it's a yeah. spidoscopula. Yeah. yeah. Also. Bridge now. Uh, Four hundred meters Scotch. at one one zero. I, ha I have a biology question. Sure. Are uh, sea sponges edible? Are they edible? Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, these are glass sponges. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't want to eat them. <laughs> um, not not by humans. But yeah, that is the a good question though. Do the starfish eat the sea sponges, or do they just up there macking? You know, that's something I haven't really. Or? Yeah, I haven't noticed that association myself, but. Um, that Potentially, top. they like to eat the, the polyps of coral, but I would believe that would be, yeah, better than eating a sponge. But That topic came up on the last expedition. I don't think we ever d uh, yeah. came up with a uh, concrete answer. Yeah. So more, more science required. Yeah, I definitely would need uh, Chris Kelly's perspective on that one. Or if we did, yeah, I don't know if we ever did get an answer. I remember there being some discussion about it. We saw uh, several sea stars on Just sponges. And yeah. Um, scintillating. I think that's, uh, yeah, an area of study that's uh, of interest right now. The association with stars and sponges and even shrimp and sponges as well. some uh, stuff Larry might be interested in up there. A potential scoop site. Ooh, a scoop oh. site. <laughs> Are we doing any scooping? I don't know, but that's above my pay grade, but I know we have two scoops aboard this time. It'd be, ni it'd be nice, but we'd be, we've seen none We've seen none that are, have any coating on them, though, at all. They're all been... That is uh, one very tall uh, branched bamboo up there. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Taller what's, than Hercules. Yeah. What, what is that thing standing right up there? Where? Right up, upper right. Upper right. Yeah. No, it's just, it's just, no, it's just a sea, it's just white sand. I, okay. I, I, yeah. yeah, I always get deceived. The refraction in my glasses. Was I right there, Taylor? Right? They are bamboos, right? Yeah, yep. So these are bamboo corals, and then we have one metallogorgia down there. And Where's the metallogorgia? It's on the bottom right. Uh, oh just boy. went off a of frame. 
but yeah, these are bamboos here. If you look closely at these guys once yeah. in a while, you'll <laughs> see the... Um, that'll, cost, that'll cost you 100 bucks. Uh, what are the guys that land the uh, that put out the streamers? Oh, uh, the firework one? Uh, no, the, um, the little gelatinous guys that put out the long streamers. Oh, the one that you like, the dandelion? Uh, no, no, the ones no. that land on the bamboo corals that we were seeing last expedition. The oh, the benthictinophores. No, the zo... The Are they zo benthictinophores? Zo something's the gold, the gold little polyps. Oh, the zoanthids. Zoanthids, <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Yeah. All the guesses until... Uh, there's <laughs> also a little... that came to save me with that so answer. That's <laughs> a little tiny gelatinous guy, and he puts out super long stringers, and we find them on those bamboo corals. They're really hard to spot. you got to be close up. So far, so far, yeah. There, yeah, I think there's some kind of benthic tuna for it, but. Yeah, I think so. And we were. Let me look at the tuna for uh, There's some shots from the last shots. expedition where they're, they're little tiny guys about the size of a uh, pea or a marble. And they put out really long stringers. They're little gelatinous. Yeah. yeah they're like, they take up maybe three or four polyps wide. Yeah, yeah, I think they're benthic tenophores. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I see them here in my guide. They have like a orangish color. Yeah, yeah, like a little salmon. orange. Yeah. You spot them as a little orange glob, and if you get really close, you can see they put out these long stringers. And yeah. Someone's beautiful. calling them the cobweb critters. Yeah. <laughs> Try not to take anything out this time. Yeah. So viewers asking, uh, well, first saying that uh, that little urchin looking thing is not in the Okeanos Animal Guide and if we're permitted to sample that species if we see it again. Yeah, I have not seen it in my guide either. Um, I'm not too sure of the call on that, so we're not in sampling mode. We've been collecting some geological samples at request of Dr. Ballard, but um, we're not, our goal is not to sample. But if uh, we do get an expert's request from the science chat to sample it, we could. Um, or even, yeah, I just would need more confirmation on that sampling because our space is limited on uh, the ROV. Uh, we don't have all of our Yankee. sampling tools. Getting the Yankee. Yeah. Someone's asking, what's the f uh, most fun thing to do on the ship? I like to just sit on the social deck. <laughs> that sounds lame. Or the monkey deck. <laughs> yeah. Um, but there's a lot of things to do. We have puzzles. Uh, some people bring their their Switch games. Uh, we were decorating cups yeah. for shrinking. Um, yeah, sometimes we'll play Uno. Just depends on how much downtime we all have. But there's plenty of things to do. Yeah, copy. And this is a Metallogorgia with a brittle star. Brittle star or basket star? It, it does look like it has curly arms, right? But I think it's a brittle star. It doesn't quite have uh, oh, it doesn't all have those like appendages. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful shot, Chris. Thank you.
Stop, but, uh, okay, as soon as you're ready to move on, move on, please. Yeah. We're still kind of waiting for the ship. Okay. As long as you're waiting for the ship. Yep. No, yeah, the ship has I've been nonstop since. Yep. No, I, I understand. The ship hasn't stopped since uh, I, I, Waypoint I, 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 3, I, just for the record. I just got a voice behind my ear that's uh, <laughs> <laughs> pinching me. <so laughs> right, I understand it. We have. Uh, we currently have a 400 meter move plugged in to make Waypoint Six. So Whoa! It's likely we'll have to stop the move before then, as it gets really steep. But um, yep. it will start getting steep. So. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. Yeah, no worries. I do that to you occasionally too. So. Yeah, but you're usually this busy with Norbit. And I'm yeah. doing nothing but twiddling my thumbs. So. Sometimes that's worse. I find that I'm a little more on it when I'm actually busy. If there's like really nothing going on, it's easy to start daydreaming. Check out. Yeah. yeah. That's when things go horribly pear-shaped. Yeah. Right, when you least expect it. Shrimp. Let's get a little zoom on that. You almost think he's walking on the bottom, but but he's not. All right, we're wide. Copy. Whoosh. I should probably just let it kind of float up, yeah? Yeah, I don't, uh, it's one of the bad habits you acquire with this vehicle because we run with the Z bias. Yeah. Which you can adjust to your heart's yeah, desire. Yeah. I'm gonna run with it. I use usually. I'm gonna run with it off and just see how it. We typically run with it around uh, 20 to 30 percent. Yeah, it was set to dead neutral. Uh, no, 50 I, is well, like. No, I mean it was set to like neutral. Oh yeah, buoyant, yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? yeah. no, I like it light. Uh, so. So but if you let off it, it just kind of gently be, comes up. Yeah, but because you're running with, like, if you forget to turn Z bias down on and you're coming up the hill, you're... Yeah. I was taught to never, ever thrust up when you're near the bottom. Yeah. Um, uh, but if... And we typically fly with no Z bias in the commercial world, you know? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. when you let go of it, it should stop or float up. Typically, you want to float up. Anyways... You find yourself pulling back on the stick with the system to have less Z bias down, which is a really, yeah, it's a bad habit. If you get on another system where they don't operate like that, you'll find yourself thrusting up and do exactly what this happened there. A viewer is asking for slow mo. Slow mo's right here. <laughs> Sorry, what was that? A viewer was asking for uh, about slow mo. My oh. class mascot. <laughs> There's a quick view of slow mo. <laughs> be Thanks sweet for that. You can have some haptics so you can feel like a buzz when you're getting close to neutral or something. That'd be another way to deal with it. Yeah. Audible, I like. Yeah. Well, something. Yeah. It's a strange. Why are they? Where are the rocks showing in that particular spot? With the ripples on each side. Yeah. Um, Taylor and we have a viewer saying that they recall similar urchins on the previous Okeanos expedition in Alaska. I wonder if this could be a range extension or not. Yeah, it's interesting. I've definitely saved these photos to send um, and to, to ask folks that would know. Um, but yeah, I really appreciate the the tips and the, the points. Those are really useful. Um, definitely would be interesting to make that new observation if it's never been seen in this area Ooh. before. Something that we're always looking for is new depth ranges or extension ranges yeah, for species. So it's interesting. Yeah, definitely worth noting in our dive reports later. Um, Ropos has an LED light, so when you're in, but they have a slider for the verts, which is yeah. really, really painful because you yeah. can't let go of it yeah, and yeah. neutral it. But they also, I always thought was cool, they have the uh, 
sorry, I lost my tilt there. Uh, no light, and you catch it out of the out of the corner of your eye. So. I want a full-on joystick and collective. <laughs> I'd be into that. You got to look at um, the BG Systems website. Okay. They're out of uh, San Diego, and they make the. Uh, they have a. They make the joysticks that uh, Shilling vehicles have been using for decades. They're different configurations, but the full-on one is has, uh, yeah, you can do everything that box does with one hand on the joystick, yeah, including pan and tilt three cameras, zoom and focus three cameras, your verticals, uh, tether in and out, uh, select any of your auto modes, uh, turn all your auto modes off with one click with a one-click cool. touch, which is really helpful because instead of having to go three buttons, you just click with your uh, pinky and it, boom, you have full control. Um, they're um, like a, you know, full-on flight stick. Yeah. Like a HOTAS kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you could yaw and, yeah, you could do everything. Yeah. Maybe, and if you had a thumb or something that you could add a roller or a slider, you could... Yeah, there's, there's uh, two options there that one is a strain gauge for the no. verts, and the other one is a, it's a little encoder thumb thing that sticks out about that far. It's very similar to one yeah. of the sticks on a on a uh, PlayStation controller. Yeah. But the top of it is just like a little button size, half inch. Very comfortable to, uh, you can rest your thumb so if you want to maintain some vertical input, you just, you're kind of resting your thumb. So it kind of works like a roller. Yeah. But when you let go of it, it goes back to zero. We have a question from a viewer. How uh, aren't the ROVs crushed right now because of the pressure? That's a very good question. Uh, <laughs> go ahead, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> figuring out where to start so um, the big yellow flotation uh, that you see on Hercules from the Atlanta view is syntactic foam when when was it so what's that oh. um, the the flotation is uh, basically microspheres mixed in epoxy resin so it's uh, it's uh, very dense and very hard but when the spheres are so tiny and embedded in the resin that they don't uh, see the pressure, but they still provide the flotation. Um, all the electronics and such are all in titanium one atmosphere housings. And they are, uh, the biggest one on Hercules is probably uh, 16 inches in diameter in the width of Hercules. And that's the main electronics bottle. It's probably one of the more expensive parts on the vehicle. And that houses uh, the bulk of, of the uh, control system for Hercules and all the I.O., the, in, the input output, and has uh, uh, quite a few penetrators on the end of it, big, big connectors, uh, uh, two inches in diameter that go to oily cables. And um, all the cameras and lights are also one atmosphere, and all the all the uh, navigation sensors and um, scientific sensors are all one atmosphere. So most of those are pretty small, the size of uh, oh, a jar of peanut butter, for example. Or yeah, uh, they vary. Some are some are a bit bigger, like the Sexton cameras are uh, maybe a foot long and uh, six to eight inches in diameter. Also, all titanium with. Um, subsea penetrators that can withstand the pressure. And then uh, the rest of Hercules is um, oil-filled J-boxes and oil-filled hoses. So we have uh, what we call a compensator, which is a it's a rubberized bladder that was used uh, in a pump. Excuse me, can, you, can I actually just uh, zoom on the uh, edge of that rock that's sitting there? The one right in the middle of the frame? Right in the middle yeah, of the frame, yeah. yeah. You ready for me? 
Uh, one second, I'm gonna get a little closer. All right, copy. I just want to see how fresh looking that face looks. Of the rock or the flow? Of the of the rock. Uh -huh. All right, you can go ahead and zoom. Copy that. Little close, little close. Copy. No, that, no, you're that was me. You were oh, fine. okay, gotcha. I'll get you down there. If no you worries. just tilt down, you'll have it. It'll be beautiful. Yeah. You can tell in your uh, look down cameras, yeah. in your uh, bubble oh. cam. There we go. Yeah, there beautiful. Okay. Just like I intended. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that, that, that's good. Thanks. You can, you can uh, pull out. Pull wide. That's exactly why we put uh, bubble cam there for you. Yeah. You can just see a hint of the porch yeah. in it. So if you land with something in bubble camera, you get the best Zeus right. view possible, but you have to tilt down and then tilt back up, of course. It's Look at that, Z-bias turned down, didn't make a little smoke rings. Yeah. Little now smoke from touching the bottom, but. Now you have to tilt back up. So to again, we're seeing, those, uh, seeing yeah. this kind yeah, of downstream of the, the of view there. Yeah. They, are, they originate from yeah. these pieces. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Larry. You think it? You think they came off of one of these bigger pieces? Yeah. Okay. There's another one. Yeah. Uh, 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 no, yeah. We're, we're, it's going a little crazy. What was that, Larry? Yeah. No, I'm saying that it's looking like these little small. There's little small stuff that we're seeing is is actually coming off the the large outcrops, and we're just trying to understand what that mechanism might be that that's breaking this stuff down. We're just uh, getting into the uh, close right. contour line, so yep. are yep. we kind of at the bottom of the slope here? Yep, yep, we're right at the bottom of the slope. Nice. How you doing? Simon's going to love that because he just came in and sat out. <laughs> I'm going to go off the line here, as my dad says, and uh, mm -hmm. talk to Simon. All right, okay. Someone just asked what happens if the ROVs get caught in fishing lines. Well, they should have watched. Tell me to go back and watch the YouTube video from two days ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, so a couple of days ago, that actually did happen, and we used one arm to grip the the line and another to cut it with a knife to free Atalanta. Just, just breaking down, yeah. Breaks down, yeah. So actually, that that'll be that'll be if we get the the little stuff analyzed, we should we should see uh, you know ze zeolites. Uh, Okay, folks, Daniela is here to take you into the next four hours of this dive. So I am signing off. Thanks for watching.
All right, sorry, I just saw that one of my kids wrote in. Hi, Hawaii is great. I don't know who you are because you didn't write your name, but thanks for watching and I'll see you when uh, I get back to school. SPL check one, two, check, check, check. Hello, this is Daniela Griffey taking over as SCF. We're in the middle of crew train, so we're just going to give everyone a little bit of time to settle on in. And then we'll go around with introductions for the 4 to 8 watch. Hey, Larry, since you're still here, do you mind if I have a question for you? Sure, go, go ahead, Daniel. All right. Uh, I have, you are asking if in, could entrapped gas in the lava rock cause bits of rock to rupture off the main rock body? I think it certainly can, but I don't think it would, it would happen this this much later after the eruption. Certainly at eruption time. Um, I'm sitting back here talking to Bob Ballard, and, and we're talking about the fact that there are glasses that are formed when the lava initially forms. And those glasses um, are not very stable, and they may quickly break down, and that process of breaking down may cause this flaking off. So that's one poss possibility, as, as Bob said, the, what we call that is a pelagonite. Pelagonite, that's is a fun it, word. It, it, yeah, well, there are lots of <laughs> weird words like that. I, I always say geologists make up big words for simple things just to, so they sound smart, but it uh, <laughs> doesn't help, really. I think that might be a scientist trait, not just <laughs> geologist trait. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, so we that that kind of process we, is is very the we, we call it very low grade metamorphism. You know, normally we think about metamorphic rocks as these rocks that are sediments or, or, or igneous rocks and then put under great tremendous pressure and they turn into something else. But there are these very very slow reactions that occur um, at at low temperature. Um, and, and this is one, is the breakdown of that, of that basalt. Wow, Bob has just showed me the uh, description of where pelagonite come from, came from. It's, uh, a, it's a, uh, it was applied by a fellow named uh, S. von Waltershausen in 1845 to a resinous brown material thought to be a new mineral species occurring in tuff. Tuff is a volcanic ash deposit in Pelagonia, uh, Sicily. It's an alteration product, so that's a that change that, that uh, from the interaction of water with volcanic glass of chemical composition similar to basalt. And it forms at low temperature hydration of the clear basaltic glass called citromelanin. Say that ten times faster. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> By uh, von Walterhausen, and it's found in high high low class lights, tufts, and pillow lavas. And these are all these uh, these are all these uh, 
products of the eruption Can we get a quick zoom video? of a volcano. Yeah, yeah. That Triclops video of this, um, okay. I think this is a purpleplex or it uh, coral. Yeah. Can you t say that 10 times fast, <laughs> <laughs> Taylor Ann? <laughs> and is that a basket star inside it yeah. weaved around as uh, well? A brittle star. Brittle yeah. star. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the same. It looks very similar to the same one that we see associated with the Metallogorgia. Um, but yeah, I think this is a purple plexorid. It does not look like a paragorgid or a victogorgia. Let me check that, though. Yeah. All right, video, come wide. Oh, I saw the first shrimp for our watch. I can, uh, yeah, <laughs> I can switch out for her here for Rennie should be up in any, in any second anyway. They want to do a scoop. Yep. No. Going to stop the uh, vessel. Stop the vessel. Going to stop the vessel. Bridge, bridge nav. Let's hold position. Yeah. All right. So for our viewer asking if there's a known explanation for the scatter, scatter bridge, plat bridge oh, nav, in tongue tied uh, already. Zero, scatter two, eight, pattern. Five. The double, the two double T's scattered bridge, pattern bridge, four zero two eight five of rock bits. Um, so one thing that can cause that is it's the currents, and then as well with the downhill slope. So if you get those combination, it kind of gives you these patterns going. And looking at those two factors, it can kind of help you predict and model where the rocks are going to be. And yeah, so Chad is asking if we're going to do a shrimp count for this one. So right now we're at one shrimp. All right, let's keep track of shrimp. All right, I'm backing the ship down for you, so hopefully we don't overshoot you with a uh, uh, Atalanta. <laughs> Roger that. Probably going to overshoot a bit. All right, so just so everyone uh, out there knows what's going on before we go to the introductions, yeah. I think we're preparing right now for uh, taking a sample. So they're just looking for the nice place to go do that. Uh, once we get there, they're scoop it up. And so that'll be, you see the arms come out, the box come out. So it's an exciting time the next 30 minutes here for the sample. Maybe do photogrammetry of the sample. It's photogrammetry time. Yeah. Yeah, 
you know if anyone ever, if this was ever figured out? Weird rock or something? Yes. Hey everybody. Let's check in here. So I have a, a viewer who asked, did you ever figure out what those weird rock urchin things were? And no, it was just too recent. We haven't really gotten any feedback on that quite yet. But um, Taylor Ann, who is very excellent, her um, best guess right now is it's a rock with actually some sponges on it. So stay tuned, I guess, see if we get any more feedback on that. But as of right now, no, we don't have any more answers for that. All right, pilots, I'm um, just stepping in here. Uh, we are backing the ship up right now to try to reduce that uh, sway from Atalanta to keep you in the pocket. Roger that. So Mike will watch our Atalanta sonar as we come around. Make sure we don't get too cold, so. Looks like we might make it without tugging it, but yeah, it looks pretty it's, good. It's, so it's, it's on the edge. <laughs> yeah, I just. Uh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we'll keep an eye. Hopefully, that momentum is arrested there with that backwards move. Sample camera. Uh, yeah, we'll have to switch so our So at this um, point, the cameras. Hercules has landed, and so they're preparing right to now, for the manipulator task. So you see in feed one, page. Uh, manipulator will be on your right, and so Simon, the ROV driver, is going to then you'll have to switch uh, get it out and essentially to, take, the, yep. take the scoop out and of the basket the and take the first sample. Uh, change that one to starboard bio box cam. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. And, and. Yes, and last night it was really fun. Um, we haven't been able to get many samples on board, so la yesterday we collected some samples of the bottom. And in looking at those manganese nodules, we actually found a shark tooth that was really cool and was covered in manganese. So it was all nice and black. It was a very thin, sharp shark's tooth. So that was a really fun find for yesterday. So I'm excited to see what we get today. Um, Atalanta did indeed stop moving to the east. So I think we might uh, we might even back up a little bit. So what you're seeing in uh, satellite feed two is Her Hercules from the view of Atalanta, which is now above it and just in front of it. And you can see the manipulator coming out. So that kind of feed two can sort of gives you the bird's eye view of what's going on. Satellite feed one is really, uh, you know, right in front of the ROV. And satellite feed three is the side of Hercules. So you can see that the collection box is now open. So the manipulator will come over and grab one of the sample collection uh, tools out and start to start stamping. And this process seems like it'd be very easy, but it is incredibly difficult because our ROV pilots it, it's you don't have that much depth perception. So Atalanta's view of Hercules looking down really helps us with that. But our ROV pilots make everything look easy. 
So that's why we have all these views, right? Yeah. Because since they don't have depth perception on the one, you need three, four views here to kind of see exactly where you're at. So they're really looking between all the screens and yeah. trying to understand, make that mental note of how far do I need to move that manipulator. It's incredibly difficult. Yeah, so just think about how many times you play that claw game and you always miss that prize, right? So there's the collection sample, um, and essentially this is this ha is a mesh bag to allow the sand and sediment to go out, so we can just keep the rock. And then if you like viewers, after the dive, if you watch our cameras and you look at the data lab, you can see how these samples are processed. So the samples are collected out of Hercules, come up to the surface, they go into our wet lab. Sorry, I think I said data lab, it's the wet lab. They would not appreciate us bringing a bunch of wet rocks into the data lab here. Um, and each, if the scoops are kind of, they're photographed, they're looked through, sorted, um, and lots of documentation, lots of paperwork, writing all, all up location where they are, any interesting facts and figures to them, so. This is a good example of just how hard it is. As you move one joint, everything else moves. So yeah. you have to really understand uh, how to get it down there. There we go. So starting the first sample collection. So I don't know if they covered it in the previous shift, but these, you know, this train is incredibly old. 82 million years is when this was formed. All the way, all the way back over by South America. And 82 years is now here by the Hawaiian Islands where they are today on Earth. So as we do these samples, really what we're able to do is date these rocks to see how, you know, um, how far did they go back? Where did they come from? Um, and just get a good sense of, you know, the time frames that we're dealing with in this area. And it's really, you know, I distinctive because this is, th this is old, but we're only 100 miles offshore yeah. from brand new volcanic rock that happened three years ago. So you just think, you know, in less than 100 you know, miles, we have brand new crust that formed and 82 million years, and uh, almost right next to each other. And that right. what makes the exploring around the Hawaiian Islands so much, so interesting too, is this, it's a pretty unique area due to this location of this hot spot. Jonathan, someone in the t um, chat is saying, suggesting of switching channel one to the cinema cam temporarily. Is that something we can do or no? No. Because we're doing the, not right now because of the photogametry? No, not while we're sampling, yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, we might be able to do that a little later on, but usually we want to keep satellite feed one onto the uh, main Zeus camera, especially while we're under operations, but we will switch it back over to uh, satellite feed 
three once we get the samples secured. So, Zach, do you think you can let the viewers know what we do with the samples when they come in with the protocol? Uh, yeah. Um, basically, we, we want as much metadata as we can about these about these samples as well as um, descriptive things. So right now, all I'm keeping track of is kind of the location, the time, um, how we collected the sample, and what we believe it is. Um, then when we get into the lab, we'll, we'll take a closer look at it. Um, we'll, we'll preserve the samples if they need to be preserved um, with the rocks, not so much preservation of them, uh, more just preparing to send them out um, to be analyzed further. So uh, it just depends on the sample, what we do. And Zach, um, where do our samples go to? Um, that is a good question. I think it depends on what the sample is. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't make that call personally, so yeah. I'm not sure where I think where, there are set here. ones. Taylor Ann was mentioning it yeah. before. From I know what I was, yeah, from what I was told, the rocks will go to University of Rhode Island. Yeah, and I think the biological samples actually get stored at Harvard's um, Harvard something. Museum of Comparative Zoology, MCZ. Museum of Comparative Zoology. So it's Harvard Museum Comparative Zoology is where our biological samples get stored. So it looks like satellite B3, you can see them putting the samples back into the sample box. It's hard to see from satellite B2. Herc's arms all the way over on the right hand side. So we're down at 1726 meters. So oh, fairly yeah. deep. Very well done, Simon. You ready for bio box to be closed? Roger that. Bio so, box closing. Uh, let's Confirming that was placed in uh, bio box E, starboard. That was the forward compartment. Okay, got so it. So samples starboard. are collected. Thank the you. box is now closing, uh, as you can see on satellite uh, three. Um, can I confirm a sample number there? Sorry, what was that? Sample number? Uh, I believe that was one for the day. Uh, we, we increment uh, okay. based on bio number of total fully. samples. So it'll be an oh. A156. This should be, I believe, is the third sample, 003. I think we actually had three samples yesterday. So we had okay. the big rock, two scoops, okay. and then we had the brachiopod. Okay, so I we're think this need is to our get fifth. That number before, yeah, uh, I'll yeah. cross check with Taylor. Anchor. It's, it's on the it's board, Zach. It's NA156 005 oh. for that sample. Zero zero five, Roger. Thank you. Thank you. I actually don't think that's right, though. You, we have taken five samples. Yeah. It, this is our. Um, we had the brachiopod, and then we did a rock yesterday and two scoops, so this would be You're our fifth sample. Uh, dive salvo. Uh, yes, please, yeah. Dive salvo back to... Doing good. To the summit we go. And there's a little anemone right there, too. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> I sit down there. Already, everyone listening, uh, the ROV pilots are just resetting. The arm has been stowed. Um, so in a few moments, we'll take off from the bottom. Our plan is to head up to the summit of the seamount through one of the valleys and wind our way and explore what's in the valley. Roger that, yeah, just to, um, just to be clear, we, we don't intend to make it to the summit on our, uh, on this dive. We will uh, hopefully make it uh, a little further up the slope, but, uh, but we won't be making the peak. We'll go as far up as time allows. Yeah. Do we it's still want to? Do we still want to do a survey, Jonathan? If anything happens. Yep. Okay. We'll keep an eye out. We're looking for the biggest spot of Something not sand fine. we can find. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ideally, a sponge topia. Sponge garden. Yeah. A sponge kingdom. Okay, Atalanta settled out roughly. Well,